instructional coach at Benton Community at Kins Elementary through the Iowa TLC grant. Um, prior to this year, I was a first grade teacher at Keystone Elementary, which is also part of Benton Community. At Benton, we are like most of you and use the FAST assessment. As a first grade teacher, I was thinking about how in first grade, we have all of these different subtests in the FAST assessment, and how can I build some of those skill practice sessions into what I'm already doing in small group um, guided reading and things like that. So that's kind of where this session idea came from, because I thought maybe someone else is looking for similar resources. So there's a tiny URL to my slide deck, it's FAST apps, and we'll get started. So I'm not very good at uh, presenting from my iPad today. I'm going to kind of be going back and forth between my slide deck and some of the apps because I want you to get a chance to see what some of the apps look like. Come on in, ladies. There's plenty of room up here. Good morning. Hi. So like I said, I'm not very good at presenting from my iPad. I usually present from my MacBook. And um, I'm going to be toggling back and forth between my apps so you can get a chance to see what those are, kind of try it before you buy it type of deal. And um, uh, go back to the presentation. So I presented this session at iPad U, which is a tech um, kind of summit at Grantwood AEA. I presented this session this summer, and one of the questions came up like in the middle of the presentation, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Has Iowa Tier or the Department of Ed said that these apps are okay for these subtests? And I was like, wait, okay. These are just things that I found as a teacher that addressed the skills that the subtests address. So in no way, shape, or form have I asked Iowa Tier, Ties, the Department of Ed, any of those people, like, do you approve of this app? I haven't asked them that because if I would have tried to get approval, We'd still be waiting. <laughs> um, I don't know, just by a show of hands, anyone else having trouble with the tier system? Yeah, we should take a picture of all these educators with hands in the air and send it to them. <laughs> and as helpful as Connor Hood is about this, working through the tier system, I'm sure he'd get a chuckle from that as well. So, like I said, in no way, shape, or form have I tried to get this app list approved by tier or the Department of Ed because if I would have, we probably wouldn't be here today. So if you're not as familiar with the FAST assessment, these are the different um, subtests that are assessed in the FAST assessment. So we have concepts of print, letter naming, letter sounds, onset sounds, root segmentation, nonsense words, uh, sight words, fluency, comprehension and fluency aren't really, really uh, specific subtests, or comprehension and vocab aren't specific subtests on the FAST assessment but I think that they're reliable skills or skills that we need to have more app practice on. So I have included resources to um, apps that focus on those skills as well. So we'll get to those towards the end. <coughs> Thinking about implementation and how in my first grade classroom I use some of these apps. So I use them in workstations. I did guided reading in first grade and I had like a text station and I organized the apps on my iPads um, by days of the week because first graders understand days of the week. And I wanted to provide some student choice in that, um, but also have some control that my kids weren't playing the same Martha Speaks app every single day because they would do that if I let them. Um, but I knew that they needed a wider variety of skill practice so I put specific apps into certain days of the week folders on my iPad. So on Monday, kids knew I can go to the Monday folder and these are all of my choices. Or I can go to the Tuesday folder and these are all of my choices. And you know it's really easy to move apps around on your iPad. So there were times where I would just take the app and I would say, move it to a different folder, say focus on fluency and have that be a fluency folder and tell a student, okay, here are all of your choices. You can choose any of these apps, but I need you to work on this skill right now. So that can be the same to any skill, and you can um, change the folder names. Like I said, for first graders, days of the week worked really well because that's something that they already knew. 
sometimes we call our MTSS system Bobcat time because we are the Bobcats and very proud of it. So um, sometimes uh, during MTSS, we would have to have like game days or things like that in order to build skill or just provide kids some variety while we did some other assessments. So that's another way that these apps could be used. Um, I'm gonna put another plug in for our district and say that we do parent partnership night. And speaking of parent partnership night, it's set up like um, egg camp. Egg camp for parents. So we invite all of our parents in. Uh, the one in my building is actually in a couple weeks. And teachers basically say, I'm gonna do this skill. I'm gonna talk about how to help your child at home with this skill. I'm gonna talk about apps to help support your child at home. And we break, it's only an hour because we understand parents' time is precious. So we provide daycare and cookies because food is what it takes to get people in the building sometimes. Um, and they basically can use the law of two feet and go to whatever session that they feel like they need in order to support their child at home. And a lot of these apps, um, my apps team for parent partnership night in a couple of weeks will include a lot of the apps that we're talking about. So we think too about how many kids actually do have devices of some sort at home kind of scary actually um, and how some of these could be helpful to support the home and school connection or um, how can we help build skill at home because I think parents are interested and do want to help and this is an easy way for them to do it. So just another implementation idea for some of these apps. So we're going to get started with recognize and name letters and sounds. And these two apps are blended, or skills are blended together. Before I go any further, I just want you to know too that we're focused on the skill more than we are on the assessment. So some of these apps don't feel like uh, an assessment and they shouldn't, they're skill practice. So uh, they, one of the things that came up at iPad U again this summer was, well, in the assessment, they just have to orally read the sounds. Well, in this app, that's not the way they do it. You're right, because I don't care as much about the assessment. I care that the kids learn the skills, and I want to give them tools to do that. So these apps address letters and letter naming and letter sound. Um, um, there are not very many apps that have those skills uh, segmented, so they're really blended skills in the app world. Um, we have Reading Friends, that's a paid for app. A lot of these are free. And we're going to look at a couple of these in a minute. And in case um, you don't, or you miss your picture, I moved too fast or something for you. Uh, like I said, my slide deck is on the resources uh, tab under the iTech website and the tiny URL. So this is Come learn spell. Just go to numbers. So when you think about letter ID. T W O T T H R E E. So you can see how the skill is blended in there with letter ID as it's um, highlighting and naming each letter. Let's look at another one. Handbugs isn't really my favorite, but it's a free one. So it gives the letter sound. Okay, so it'll go through basically like flashcards and give the letter sound for each letter. So are these? Go ahead. Are these interactive, or are they just they're just listening at this? These two, these show this. With those two, they're really just listening. So I'm not going to go through every single one. We'll come back to letter quiz um, and phonics island. Those are a couple good ones that my students really liked. Onset sounds. Again, we're so thinking about the skill instead of the assessment. But these are some apps that directly assess, or uh, I'm sorry, directly practice the onset sound skill. So sound sorting, beginning sounds is another good one. Sometimes, I included the picture here, because sometimes when you go to the app store, 
uh, and you type in the name of an app, it doesn't necessarily come up with the app that you want. So I spy phonics, we're grab phonetics, sound sorting, beginning sounds, and phonics bin. Like I said, these all address the onset sound skill. We'll look at a couple of those. Let's go to this one, silent and loading, or the two, two, letter quiz. Learn. Learning for the future century. <laughs> So some of these have long intros, and I apologize for that. The kids like it. Make it a little bit more engaging. Go through the word wizards. 
Um, and I won't say that it directly does much with nonsense words, but you could if that's what you needed. Uh, I went to a training on Friday on differentiated accountability, so they're having them all across the state. Andrea, remind me what the SSIT stands for? Statewide School Improvement Team. Okay, so the Statewide School Improvement Team led this training. Oh, I linked this document, 10 minutes and 10 minutes about the FAST assessment into my slide deck. But number five, focused on nonsense words. And students who score below target on nonsense word fluency need a nonsense word intervention. And basically that team has come and said, no, 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 we don't give nonsense word interventions. Uh, we don't teach nonsense words. They're not a practical skill. The assessment is, again, supposed to be focused more on skill growth instead of the assessment itself. So I struggle with nonsense words a little bit due to personal beliefs on teaching nonsense words and the fact that there's not very many apps. Um, I'm gonna be really honest and say if you're really grasping for a nonsense word app, then I would recommend the nonsense uh, app for $4.99. It's not, it's not great. <laughs> like you see it scrolls through the nonsense words and produces different words and reads the words to the students, but it's not very interactive. But we can talk about um, the Word Wizard app And I can show you how you could use that to talk about nonsense. Welcome to Word Wizard. Okay. Please drag some letters to the board. So again, the accent is a little different than what they're used to hearing, but when I talked about how this could be uh, connected to uh, Nonsense Words at iTech, we uh, talked about how students could make D. Good. D. nonsense words and decide or make a word decide if it's nonsense. Um, I like how these letters are color coded for consonants and vowels um, to talk about CBC with kids. But how could I change that word into a real word? It. Dig. Dig. So, there, if you really wanted this to be a nonsense word component, there, you could have like a paper of nonsense words next to them, have students build that, decide if that is a nonsense word or a real word based on what they hear or what they read. Um, but like I said, that's what the state had come out with even on Friday. Um, maybe some of you got it before I did <coughs> on their take on nonsense words. If you haven't seen that 10 minutes and 10 minutes and you're at all interested in sharing information with your staff about the FAST assessment, I highly, highly recommend that. We had a full day of professional development yesterday and we shared that with all of our K3 teachers and I think they all found benefit in knowing some of those myths versus truths of what the FAST assessment really is. So another set of apps that are on concepts of print, thinking about beginning of the sentence, how words make a sentence. I think about the kinder subtext and how it talks about a letter versus a word um, and the direction in which we read. So some of these are uh, read aloud stories, like the Disney story time, where it tracks the words and um, basically models fluent reading, but tracks how we start at the top of the page and things like that. Endless Reader is probably one of my all-time favorite apps. And Endless Reader has a lot of different apps. Um, there's some math apps for Endless Reader as well that are really good. Again, I apologize for the long intro, but if you've never seen this app, it's completely worth it, plus it's free. Funny. 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 Funny.
Select your player. Create your profile. Then, tap tap on the game you want to play. Gears. Tap on the speakers in the gear shapes to hear words. Then, drag the gears with the words onto the right speakers. So I had a student, we have a maker space in our building, and last year I had a student say, oh, Mr. Bob, there's this game, and it has gears on it. Can we make something with gears in the maker space? Mason, yes, we can. So, just another you. cool connection. So they're matching the sight words in this game. kids because you can't use it with very many kids at once um, but basically what it does is I set up a student account in the app and I'll use my son's name Carson because he gets to be the name on a lot of these um, by default so I would set Carson up on the app and he would read I identify his level say I put him at a level L and he'd read a level L passage to the iPad answer some questions do a retell and all that and then the app or the passage would get kind of sent away into cyberspace and then I would get an email saying how he did on the app uh, or how he did on the passage, what his errors were, his rates, um, it would give me an audio recording of his retail, it would tell me how he did on the comprehension questions. So it's a really, really great app that really focuses on the idea of reading. However, its barriers are that it can't do like even half of your class. You can set up multiple email accounts to get more students in, so that's what I did. I used my personal email and my school email to get to do, like I said, a handful of students. Is there anything else that? It used to be you can have 10 free recordings a month, and I got an email a couple of weeks ago that they were changing it down to five. Mm -hmm. So I think at one time last year, I put in a quote to get a quote for a classroom of 20 to do, um, every two weeks for that class of 20, and I think it was $420. So if you can work it out that, that you can use the free version with multiple emails, that's great, but it is very expensive because what they do is they send it out to an actual person and the actual person analyzes it and then sends it back. And they get paid X amount of um, dollars or cents per reading that they do. Um, in a sense, it's really great in theory, but it is very expensive if you would It's free up front. Yeah. So if you have a couple of kids that you want to try it with, mm -hmm. or even that'd be a great resource to give to parents at home, like use your own email and set that up. Um, and then forward me the emails once you get it. Uh, that would be a, one way to use this app, but 
like Andrea said, in theory it's great. In reality, its barriers are you can't do very many kids at once, especially on one email. And, uh, and that's a big deal when you have 20, 25 kids in your class. One minute reader, there's a free version. Uh, there's also a version that's $20. So when I think about app purchases that I've made, um, I think that this was one of the best. Uh, I bought this for my son who's in third grade uh, last year. And the same makers of One Minute Reader are those who uh, produce Read Naturally. So if you're not familiar with One Minute Reader, we'll go through that in a minute. But uh, it has the whole goal component, um, the comprehension component, the timed component, the repeated readings component, and it tracks it for the student to show that they um, are making gains or growth towards a goal. I think my favorite part about One Minute Reader is that the passages are really um, interesting for kids. So it's not one of those really dry, kind of silly passages. I think um, the prank, I think of the prank in the FAST assessment, if any of you listen to first graders read the fast assessment. There's one about a prank and how many times I've listened to that. These are more um, informational based. So there might be one about spiders or one about <laughs> Helen Keller and things like that. So kids are pretty motivated to read the passages in One Minute Reader because they're very interesting to them. Um, I did figure out a way <coughs> with the $20 version to get eight different kids in the same app. Again, all of these things make a difference when we have 20, 25 kids in our class. Uh, so, like I said, I kind of used the hodgepodge of these apps because they all have limits as they're not designed for an entire class because they want you to buy one per kid. Um, but, one minute reader, like I said, there's eight different sets of passages, so I just put a different student on each set of, of the passage. Time reading and comprehension practice. There's a limit to how many kids you can put in for in the free version. The paid version, I believe, is $2.99. Uh, I bought the paid version, and I could put my entire class in. So that is really the benefit to the timed reader app. I don't like the gold and the graphing as much as I like in one minute reader, but I really like that I can put my entire class in the timed reading and comprehension practice. Again, I also really like that it focuses on that comprehension skill as well, beyond just reading quickly. Uh, quick Voice Free is another one where students can record their voice and then you can listen to it later. Um, same with Reading Fluency Free, there's some passages there. I think about uh, Pinterest a lot when I think about these things and how I use them in my classroom. So I was fortunate enough to have an associate in my room. A lot of times what she did is worked with students on graphing. And so they would do some of these activities, or I would work on them with graphing. But they would do some of the fluency activities, and then they would go to their graph and graph some of those results with the support of the associate or myself. Because sometimes that graphing component is a challenge for our English learners. Also on my slide deck is a, app, uh, a link to ELI apps. It's a thing link that goes over some of these apps, some that are more teacher tools. So uh, things like Levelbook and other apps like that that are more for the teacher are also included in that thing link. To give the price and kind of an overall app review. Let's look at a couple of these. Uh, We'll go to one minute reader because it's twenty dollars and you need to try it before you buy it. Please select like the story. Okay, so introducing Barbie, Ice Age, animals, <laughs> uh, living fossils, against the odds, and a chew are some of the stories in this one. Uh, I'll go to the graph. Okay, so in this set, when Carson read this, um, he did one read along. I guess he only practiced one time. Um, and he got a four out of four on the quiz. So like I said, I really like the graph on this where it talks about the hot read versus the cold read um, and shows students how they did on each of the repeated readings. Like I said, my sinker at home only did it one time. Um, <laughs> but 
they can do up to five. There are. And so, the story. So there's a lot of different books. And when I was talking about how I fit eight different kids, it was really in this. So there's eight different um, sets here, story sets. And then you can go into each one, and they have five or six stories. So that one would have been Carson. This is for my third grader instead of first graders. But so that's how I fit eight different kids into that $20 app. Again, a really great app because it prompts kids of exactly what they're supposed to do. It listens to the recording and all of that. Timed reading. Like I said, I have the paid version so I could fit my entire class in. I believe it's about $2.99. Apparently, my class got deleted because they're no longer with me. But, again, same thing. Listen to the story, answer some questions. It uh, tracks fluency rate um, and errors and all of those great things. Thinking about comprehension apps because these, this is another skill that isn't directly assessed in the FAST assessment, but that 10 minutes and 10 minutes document is going to argue against that and tell you all of the ways comprehension really is affected in the fast assessment. So, some of my favorite apps for comprehension are um, this reading comprehension. This is grade four or five, but there's a lot of different versions of that. These apps are okay. I like that they're free. And I like these apps because they're skill specific. Um, I think about my kinder friends and how main idea short text, there's also a main idea sentence reading. We use the uh, curriculum resource benchmark literacy, and if your districts are ever looking for, uh, to adopt a new curriculum resource, I highly recommend that. Benchmark literacy do not work for them. They have not paid me to say that, but it is really great. All of the materials are really great. Small group, whole group, um, teacher tool, all of those things. Um, but they have the skills broken down in comprehension, by main idea, inference, fact, opinion, etc. Um, so I really like that I could pull these apps out and they were working on building skill of what we were working on in our classrooms with small group or whole group. So that's a benefit to those apps. We can look at one of them. One disadvantage to these apps is they are free, so you only get so many stories. Hi. They can get more by passing through certain levels. I appreciate the helpful hints or them sharing them with kids. I think another disadvantage is I don't know that all my kids could would take the time to read this. They'd see that okay and then they'd move on. The sentence can be about more than one thing. Okay. So then they read the sentence or they could have or the short text. The Dead Sea is a lake them. between three countries, Israel, <coughs> Jordan, and Palestine. The lake is 418 meters below sea level, which makes it the lowest point on Earth. The Dead Sea is almost nine times as salty as the ocean, so most plants and animals can't survive in it. So we need to answer this comprehension question. This sentence is mostly about another disadvantage, I would say, because it doesn't read the question to kids. I like that it reads the passage, and I like that it reads it in an accent again that they're familiar with. But the comprehension question that we need to answer is what is this sentence about? And it's the link between three countries, Israel, Palestine. Okay, so that's a The Dead Sea is a lake between three countries, Israel, Jordan, and Palestine. You can have it read more than one time. Like I said, the app is free. Uh, this one is an online slide deck, but this is on phonics. Has anyone seen this app before? It's free. When we talked about links 
letters. We mean two or three letters that just belong together, like these. Rough. My kids or like these. Beans. And the rack as well. Or these. <coughs> so there's a teaching component to this. There are three letters between the vowels in this word. But these two letters belong together. They're linked. So we split the words between the M and the D. Gum. Drop. This is hooked on phonics. Like I said, it's not a Gum drop. Like but it's a free one that's excellent. Now look at this word. Again, there are three letters between the two vowels. What can you help us with as far as at practice with nouns? And so we found some apps on nouns, and there's a winning word uh, app there. Marva Speaks Word Spinner is one of my students' all time favorite apps. Again, I don't work for PBS. Uh, they just really like that app. Uh, it is $1.99. Kind of works like Candyland, um, but there's a lot of interactive activities like bucket ball and um, storytelling and things like that. But they're all about, like I, like the Martha Speaks show, this vocab based. They're all about different vocabulary words, tell what they mean. Um, and it's really interesting, like the word minute is in there and they have to find things that are minute. And uh, for a first reader to say, well, that's really minute. Like, okay, that's great. Um, World's First Pen is a great free one. I would say it was a little bit challenging for some of my first graders. Uh, but another excellent um, app for, especially for I'd say second through even fifth grade. Chictionary is another great app where students are taking eggs and building words. I'll admit that people have a hard time finding Chictionary in the app store. Um, <coughs> and Mad Libs is an oldie but a goodie that kids still enjoy. So to wrap up, Again, this is it. Uh, think about your favorite apps. How are they related to the skill? Not necessarily at the assessment. Uh, my friend and colleague, Andrea, has created a s'more with Iowa Tier Tip. So if you or anyone in your district is interested in how to uh, work around some of the tier issues that we're all experiencing, she has some great resources for you there, like your students aren't loaded until you have this. Or um, what else is on there, Andrea? Some of the testing uh, benchmarks. Yep. Um, also, you know, entering time, making sure that teachers know how to do that. That was something that was new to us this year is actually entering the intervention time um, and having teachers be responsible that, for that. So it's just a quick video of how to do that on there. Uh, another topic that I've presented on in the past is iPad management in an elementary classroom. So that goes over tips and tricks of how I manage my iPads in my classroom. Um, everything down to where are we going to get more iPads from, to uh, organizing by folder, to how am I going to manage the mess and not make more work for myself as far as charging and things like that. 
uh, we were we read the leader in me, and so it read some of the ideas um, in the leader in me by Covey, and has some of the iPad management in the classroom, and there's some more resources there as far as tech tools and the fast assessment. Are there any questions? I'm sorry, I just talked at you for 45 minutes. It was under the resources. My last name is Yupa, U-P-A-H. I searched fast when I was looking for the resource, under the resources. Otherwise, it's tinyurl.com slash fast apps. I'm sorry. I have a question about a site word app. I am looking for one where I can customize a list since we have introduced our site words in a specific order that can be linked <coughs> to all my iPads. So I don't have to make this list of like hundreds of words on each. Do you use Spelling City where you can upload your own list? I can try that. And is have you tried one, Spelling City? I have it, but I haven't tried it. So I'll have to try mm -hmm. that. And is that one that I can like log in on each individual iPad and it'll link mm -hmm. up? Mm -hmm. Do you have another suggestion besides that too so I can check a couple? Yeah, so Spelling City, another one that I've used not necessarily for sight words, but I have a, I have a preschool teacher who's doing some inquiry-based learning on pumpkins. And is anyone in here familiar with the Tiny Tap app? Well, there's an app called Tiny Tap that you can basically build your own app, and um, you'd have to log in. And basically, what would happen is your game would become public, and then you could put that game on multiple devices. So you could. And it gives a bunch of like different teacher formats. So I think about one with a bunch of boxes that kind of look like bingo squares. Um, and then you make it interactive. You can add video to that and say a, a picture, a video of you will pop up saying, pick all the sight words that, you know, find like. And then you would select an area. And if kids clicked in that area, it would be correct. So that's kind of another build your own app. But that's one where we, like I said, I'm using with my preschool teacher to teach parts of the pumpkin. And uh, to add on to that, bits board is another. <coughs> bits board. Bits board. I use that with my kids, and um, the the subscription one lets you build your own boards. Otherwise, they have free ones to go to the free main. Awesome. Thank you. But you have a I was just wondering how much uh, funding do you allocate to each teacher? Zero. Zero. There's no money for this. <laughs> um, but really, we, we have a really supportive PTO that um, would give teachers iTunes cards and things like that. Um, but we don't have any money for things Seriously. like this. Just before you leave, we have kids coming back at 1115 to talk about makerspace. So if you are at all interested in makerspaces, I should have put a plug in for this earlier. We have about eight students coming today. The oldest one is in third grade, the youngest one is in first. So if you think kids can't do it, they really can. They're here to teach you about how to use tools in the makerspace. So at 11.15 in room 401, I believe, we're gonna talk about makerspace and kids are gonna if you allow them to teach you something about that. So if you're looking for a session at the 11.15 time, I promise that'll be a lot more interactive. <laughs>